Hello, hello, and welcome back to the Cooter Villa channel. I'm Scott Cooper, and I'm here with Tommy Lazaridis and Noah Fisher to discuss Aston Villa versus Fulham from the weekend. Yep, it's 13 games in a row now at Villa Park. Bounce back ability, boys, after the Nottingham Forest game. We won in midweek as well against Azard Alkmaar. It's been a great week. We needed a big week. It's international break now, and we'll be bringing you all of that and much more after this. Okay, yes, yeah, so we were at Villa Park. We had Fulham with the visitors, and we were going for 13 wins in a row at Villa Park in the Premier League, um, and it was a huge win. But, Noah, the breaking news that you wanted to touch on that's just uh, come in on the last hour or so. Go, the, what, what's What's been happening? Uh, so Esri Consa has been added to the England squad finally. It's about time that uh, Esri has done it. He has been unbelievable this season. He's even got better than than his heights at Aston Villa. It's probably the best he's ever played in the Villa shirt and yep. as consistent as he's ever seen. And it's incredibly deserved. And I, I think, so obviously Watkins was the most recent besides that. And there was mm-hmm. Grealish and Mings. And I can't think of any other Villa players since he have been promoted to be in the England squad. I think that's it. So he's at yep. four, four of them, which is, uh, I think it'll be growing. I really think that will grow over time because I think JJ, when he gets fits, um, could be next yeah. one on, on the he, cards. He should be the next probably but, uh, once he gets back in action. But um, yeah, England have got Malta and North Macedonia. So it's a good chance for him to sort of, you know, kind of, come in slowly against some maybe weaker opposition and get a couple of caps, hopefully. Um, that's Hopefully he does get some minutes. But how do you feel about that news, Tommy? Do you think, uh, like most of us, that it was well-deserved? well, well, uh, well Yeah, well-deserved. And more importantly, well overdue, to be honest. Right? Yeah. Like, you know, even last season, him and, and Mings were just kind of holding the fort down. And, you know, like, we, we were doing well. I mean, since since Emery's arrived, just everyone's kind of elevated their their performances. But, you know, like, it's, I just feel, you know, they've been overachieving every year, them too, even back to the Dean Smith days. So, well yeah. overdue. He's young. I think he should have at least been in the mix. He's not on the bench. He's better than what's there. And if you actually look at the England squad, it's actually quite an aging squad. You know, I actually, you know, apart from Bellingham and a few others, that you know, we need an injection of youth. So, um, yeah, and no, I think I think it's well overdue and, and super well deserved. The guy's been an absolute rock. He's still a miserable bastard, though. Come on, Esri, smile a bit, laugh. Come on, come on. Yeah, he was certainly uh, a bit angry uh, yesterday when they conceded the goal, um, and it, there was a few other times as well. But he's playing so well, Noah. And uh, what, what what you you've got a question for us both? Apparently, what's the, what's this? What, I do. Yeah. So we bought it for twelve million pounds. Yeah, which at the time everyone said we overpaid for Esri Consa. What's he worth? What's he worth? What's he worth now? Oof, I'd say in this current climate, fifty. Probably now that he's got an England cap. Yeah, well, I was going to say up, not a cap I, yet. I was going to say forty to fifty somewhere. There. Yeah. I think fifty might be stretching it. But yeah, I think I actually think once he starts for England, he might actually hold. I think he will hold his place. So mm. yeah, I think forty fifty. You know, caps seem to overvalue players and. Um, I mean, we have a history now all of a sudden of, of, of selling homegrown talent for, for quite a lot of money. So anyway, hopefully we don't get any bids based on his incredible form and we can retain him. Um, do we know when his contract's up, Noah? Is I he think he re-signed him? last season or the season before on a five-year deal. Beautiful. Yeah. So he's got three time. or four years left. So he's, he's one under contract. I reckon he'll be the next one that try pin down another, another long-term deal because he deserves it again, especially after the call-up. And, um, you know, I think he's got you maybe know, even like future Villa captain in him. You know, he's that kind of character. He's, uh, he, you know, he's, uh, he's a leader and he's just improving all the time. He's, he's so strong this season. I feel like he's getting really good at like holding the forward off the ball and sort of, you know, shepherding the ball and this sort of thing. Like the sort yeah. of thing you see McGinn do all the time. He seems to be bringing that into his game. Maybe like a Kamara as well has that ability to just, you know, be, be um patient and calm, yeah, and just you know not not panic and just kick it into Rosette. You know, keep hold of the ball for us and start another attack. He's a yep. Rolls Royce, and I remember when Tyro Mings got calls up. I call up. Everyone was like, "Oh, where's Consa? When's it going to be his turn?" That was like four years ago. You got to think about that. Like that's how long he's been amazing for Aston Villa and just flying under the radar. But that I guess sums up 
our rise. Mm-hmm. I mean, no one really knows how good Ezra Consor is except for Aston Villa fans. That's how much he goes under the radar. And it's the most deserving England call up since Jack Rewish got caught up when he played for Aston Villa because, again, mm-hmm. someone that should have been the squad a long time before that. Yeah. Um, and he's finally getting his chance to show it at the top level. Yeah. And I, I saw Ian Wright comment on the, um, on one of the, on, on the tweet. Uh, from the England national team and say well overdue. So there is, I think, a few more people this season taking notice of Villa with our good run and the fact that we're sitting fifth in the league, only uh, four points off top at the moment. So um, it's been a good weekend for us. There's been a few good results for us. Uh, We can get into that a bit later. But let's start off with the AZ game, Tommy. And I want to go to you first because um, the first game this season that we've gone behind and come back and won, which I think is a big thing. Obviously, we had the Forest disappointment last Sunday, where we didn't really turn up in in terms of attacking wise. But this game, we showed uh, quite a bit of fight. I think um, there were some good performances in there from the likes of Tillemans, who got his start on Sunday, yep. of course, yep. off the back of that. And um, yeah, just to show that fight to go one nil down and then turn it around. Um, goals by. Diego Carlos, his first goal for Villa, of course, fantastic. Unfortunately, he got picked up a hamstring injury after that. This, uh, you know, that was uh, devastating for him. But he got his first goal, and then Ollie with the uh, winner with a great bit of play from Douglas Louise. Yeah, um, and I think uh, is it is it true where they issued a statement of apology for long lace goal where it should have actually stood? Correct. So um, could have, you know, been one to the good early on, but that's yeah. unfortunate. So, um, yeah, look, uh, I think it was an overall great performance. Bailey is continuing to impress. Um, you know, I'm surprised that Tillman will touch on a short. I'm surprised Tillman start over him, but again, credible performance. Uh, I think Bailey was actually my man of the match against RZ Alkma and then Tillman's with the second, but I mean, you yep. can justify either or, to be honest. Uh, you know, a lot of, lot of mental resilience to go down and then come back. You know, it's not easy, these games, and... RZ are having a pretty good season in edit divisi as well. So, um, you know, despite, you know, going down, it, it's great to just show that grit and determination. Um, you know, and that's, that's end-to-end. Um, they had some good chances too, but yeah. you know, I think we nullified them and I think we started to take control once we actually, you know, secured the lead. So I'm really happy with the overall performance leading into the weekend as well. Yeah, uh, it wasn't our best performance, Noah, and I think um, AZ caught that high line Um out a couple of times um, uh, and, you know, with the goal, I think as well. So, um, you know, there, there was definitely some sort of things we had to work on after that match, but sometimes you got to grind out these games and to come back like we did, we had Ron Vlaar, of course, um, in the crowd, uh, who's a, a bit of a, I don't know, a, a notable player from both teams. I, I don't know if he's a, a Villa legend. There's a few people that are angry the way he left, but you know, it was good to see him there and I saw him and Ian Taylor, you know, having a chat and that sort of thing. So, um, yeah, it was, a, it was a good night all around. I mean, you touched on it before. that they're, they're games that you, know, you have to win that way. Obviously, AZ, they've got to win. I think they're actually bottom of the group still. You know, yep. and they're flying high in Eredivisie. They were probably the team we thought would qualify alongside with, which I'm not sure if it's... I think both teams need one point to qualify, otherwise they're done. But it's looking like they're not going to go through. No. Um, and obviously, Ron good Vlar. For us. It is it is good for us. Uh, but Ron Vlar, future club captain. I know he left on. I mean, if he turns, thought he could get the big fish and and go somewhere else. It didn't quite turn out that way. But yeah, he put a few years of service into the club when we needed a a leader, and he was that leader. I never. He was a solid Sunday. player. He was a he solid was. player. Concrete Ron. Concrete, Concrete Ron. Yeah. I'll, I'll never forget that goal he scored against Sunderland from halfway. Yes. Um, banging goal. Um. Yeah, good player. I know. I think he was at AZ when he first came through into football, yes. and then he went there and retired. So, yep. I mean, he's got connections by the club. Good to have him back. I think it was at the first leg as well as one of their guests, I guess. But sure. I'm just buzzing. I know we're not top of the group yet. I know we have to play them. Is it next Friday? No. Yeah, we got Leggy in, in the Two, next th- match. Yeah, um, that's that's early after December, the international break. And if we win by two goals, we we'll will definitely top. be top of the league, and we can. We can maybe play the kids in that last game against Mostar because That's be that, a tough game. Yeah, that won't matter at all. Uh, we yeah. will finish top if we win by two goals because the head to head. Yeah, that's because right. we lost three two in Warsaw in the first match. We have to better that result to, yeah. um, yeah, to go ahead of them. Um, in terms of uh, yeah, the top top spot. 
like or secure the top spot. You know, yeah, um, but, we can still beat them and then win again, of course, uh, against Mostar. Yeah, but honestly, what a I guess what a turn rate in Europe because I guess I know we beat Hibs in the qualifiers, but. I guess the mood after we lost that first game was kind of like, geez, like, what's going on here? And then we had to wait to the 90th minute McGinn header to win our first game in Europe. And people are thinking, geez, are we, you know, are we actually built for this? And then we've mm. actually proven the last couple of games that yes, we are. Agreed. And we can go quite far in this. And of course you have to do this. You have to win tough. I mean, we've won tough in this competition twice. It's never going to be easy. I still can't believe how well we won away at AZ, to be honest with you, it was a four nil in the end. Cause they're an absolutely quality outfit and, what three out two of our two out of our three wins have been absolute grinds. And they yeah, pumped yeah. the team before they played us. I think yeah, a they couple did. goals to nil. Yeah. So, you know, it's not like they're they're the scrappers in, in the division. I think the other thing with with you know many European conference, right? Just the, the atmosphere away is so hostile as well. So mm. um they suck the air out of it, makes it really hard. And you know, there's probably limited allocation as parole, and you know, they check your barcode and your passport and your bloody yep. blood type as well. So <laughs> um, you know, so we miss you, Owen. Always welcome your wisdom. Always back, welcome back anytime. But I think I think it's really hard to you know play in these competitions. It's completely different, you know. Like we could be playing, I don't know, that Sharif Terrace ball, whatever they are, and they yeah. come out and dominate against the best teams in the world, right? So you just never know what to expect. And like I said, it's progressive. That's the main thing. And um, I'd still like to see maybe Timmy Roganbaum, some of those kids given a game. So mm-hmm. really do hope we win the next leg against Warsaw two plus. Kelly I mean, Man, is, is Kelly Timmy still injured? Like- is he? Um, I think he's on the bench. Was he on the bench, was he? Because I, oh, yeah. I, I haven't seen him around the squad since I heard he was injured in pre-season, but that'd be interesting. Oh, he's a he's a gun. Someone that we backed in for ages. Yeah, and um, I thought maybe, like, let's go let's go to the, the game on Sunday against Fulham now. Like, I actually thought that was something we might see. When we when we were 3-0 up, um, I was thinking, well, Louise is one booking away from a span. Kamara is one booking away from a ban. Ollie's on a yellow. Get those guys off now. We don't want one of those guys to be um to be suspended against Tottenham when we come back from the international break. But he only made the one sub with Bailey, and I thought that was a bit strange. What did you guys think about that? When do the bookings flip over? Does anyone know? Uh, I think it might be after this break, but I'm not sure. I know it's three times a year it happens, I think. I think it's like a third of the season or something each time. I guess yeah. we'll find out. But, I mean, what do I think of the change? I mean, I thought it was – I think he's backs in his players. He has the plans. If if a player like Louise is going to be dumb enough when he knows he's one booking off to do something stupid to get a yellow, that's on him. I think that's how he sees it because we have the players to cover it. Yeah, well, I think it actually affected him a little bit. I, I don't think he was flying in for tackles like he normally no, he was. He was playing well when he had, when we had the ball, but there was a few times where we got close to players and he put his hand up as to, to say, I'm not fouling him, ref. You know, he really didn't want that yellow. And um, I think Ollie, playing... on the other hand, Ollie was happy to go wrestling, let alone, <laughs> oh, McGinn, McGinn was baiting, what's his name, Palinho, just for a foul. Like, I'm not going to lie, some of his fouls didn't look that rough. You know, like, but the, I think that I think the ref maybe let one or two go a bit too far. But it was funny when when he when he I think it was the sixth foul. I'm like, yeah, he's getting the card, and I think you could see McGinn like like roaring. McGinn loves it. McGinn mm. loves it. Oh that yeah, he was he was winding up Paulina big yeah. time. Man, I'm just fun. looking at the I'm just looking at the bench here, and there was no kids really on the bench. Yeah, unless you count Duran as a kid, but. Um, Bailey, Dendonka, Olsen, Duran, Zaniolo, Longley, Chambers, Moreno, Traore was the bench. Such so, an experienced bench, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, you think give right. maybe some of these guys, maybe Zaniolo or I don't know. What happened, but, what happened to Amari Spellman? Is he is he injured? Uh, yeah, I'm, I don't know. I don't know why he's not. I, I think I spelled his name wrong. It was Kellyman. 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 Yeah. Yeah. Sorry, yeah. Amari Spellman was uh, the power Spell- forward for the old. I was so horse. confused. I was like, who <laughs> the <laughs> hell is Spellman? I know who you're talking about. I know. Played, I knew... played for yeah. the Atlanta Hawks actually about okay. ten years ago. So there you go. Sorry, wrong wrong sport. But um no, it was a good game. Um, we came out of the blocks pretty well. Diaby had an early chance. He should have scored. Big chance. Um, yeah, it was well set up by Digne, I thought. And Diaby was back to his best after a quiet game, I thought, against Forrest. Um, and we're talking about that bounce back ability. That's what I said in the intro. And I think all the guys that were poor against Forrest, and I'm gonna highlight Diaby, Watkins. And Cash is the big three. I thought they had very poor games last weekend. This game, they all made huge impacts on the game. Cash with that tackle, that was the highlight of the game. 
Yeah, because agreed. because if that doesn't happen, the McGinn goal doesn't happen ten or twenty seconds later, yeah. and um, we might go in yeah. one one at half time. That literally in cash one vote, just so you know. Like I said, it's between McGinn and Tillemans for who you give what, right? Like Tillemans, I think he's hit a little purple patch, and long may that continue. Tell mm-hmm. you what, cash though, stop fucking shooting from outside the box. All right, <laughs> pass it off. You ball. I- I mean, I think the first one he was he was well within his rights to have a shot. The second one he should have laid off to Diaby. I, I, I think Diaby was you. right there. Yeah, I yeah. Said, oh, gosh, but um, you know, I mean, I'm I'm happy to kind of jump into the goals. I mean, we're going to just talk oh. about Tillemans' class and is I tell you what, he's a little bulldog. He goes in. He's a bit rough. He's got arrogance. I love him honestly. He's what we needed. He's and, what and, we needed. And, and he gave a full ninety minutes, right? Like full mm-hmm. of man and easy up. And to be honest, like I think you know, it could have easily been three two. I don't. I think we would have still run away with it, but you know, once we let them back in, they started to sniff around. Their coach, what a coach, by the way, Marcos is at Flores. Marcos, is Silver. Silver. yeah, yeah, he's a good coach. And I'm like, guys, an absolute gun making the right subs, and they're going for it. So I'll give full and full credit, but I really think you know we started to romp them. I think we started to tire out, and like you said, Scott. I think mm. maybe clean the bench out. Maybe we should have brought them Donker on at three 0 Um, yep. you know, maybe for Kamara, but then I know if you take Kamara, feel bitch and be shitty, but. Is what it is, or you know, do you take Dougie off and then just go kind of ultra defensive? I don't know. Sani Ola well, didn't even come on, and yeah, I was surprised. Was it, was it was it Emery or someone that said it? I think the gambling thing, I don't know if it's starting to uh ramp up a little bit, but I think that's on the back of his mind now. Whether that's translating into something else, you know, is it becoming a bigger debacle than we think? Mm. We don't know, I guess time will tell, but yeah, a bit of a bit of a mystery that one. I thought he would have at least made a cameo, but it's great to see Tillemans getting. Like involved that 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 Unreal. cross on his left foot was perfect. It like caused all kinds of problems for uh, the Fulham defence. They didn't know what was going on. And I thought I thought it was Diaby who put it in at first, but the replay showed it came off Robinson yep. for an own goal. But um, you could just see like when Watkins scored, he was the first one to come over and jump on his back. Like he's he he feels a part of it now, Tillman. So it's yep. great to see. Yep. Yep. And, I mean, and to be honest, so unselfish. And I know a striker like Ollie loves Tillemans, right? Like yeah. Tillemans finding the runs, the through balls. He's all about the team, and that's exactly what you want. And to be honest, for a free transfer, honestly, it could be one of the signings of the season if this form continues. Yeah, and no, we were given a penalty early on, which was uh, reverse. I think it was the right decision. It yeah. comes off his face, um, not his arm, but... Um, that was a great bit of interplay leading up to that between Diaby and Watkins, where they were playing almost sort of like uh, like foot tennis to each other, just like knocking it back and forward. And Ollie has the shot, which uh, ricochets off Castagna. But um, yeah, VAR not on our side that that time. But like uh, like we said, we eventually get the goals. And let's talk about McGinn's goal because that was the goal of the game. John McKim. <laughs> he is him. What a what a player. He's actually like the way Emery's allowed him to kind of play like he does for Scotland and get further up the field and score goals. Hmm. It's what we love to see. And the goggle celebration. Um, obviously does it for his nephew, I believe. Yeah. This is what he says, because his nephew yeah. has to wear goggles when he plays. It's just lovely. Um, hmm. and that's the type of character he is. And it's that's just a John McGinn goal. Because honestly, when we're losing the game, we're not playing well. Like if you try that shot against Forest, yeah. it's it's coming back to Birmingham. It's going mm-hmm. out of the stadium. But when it's going your way at Villa Park, hit it low and hard. No one's saving that. Um, mm. What a finish! And it's a difficult finish. I find like like playing myself when you st- when you have a shot with inside the foot and you start it outside the post and bring it back. That's one thing. But starting it at the keeper and and curving it, it into the yeah, corner yeah. like he did, that's a very difficult skill. And to find oh, the corner like that, massively. it was, it was it's, almost like, it's almost like that Chelsea goal who scored that time, right? Very similar. Yeah. That, yes. Very similar. Yep. Can yeah. I just rewind back to the penalty that we were denied? Silly question. Okay. It came off Castagna's face and went out. Why was a goal kick? Yeah, I don't I know. Think I was confused. Blew, did he the blow the whistle? Wanted, wanted... Did he blow the whistle before the ball went out? That's yeah, the only I think thing, he did. I that's think the only did. thing I can think of. But... Yeah, I think okay. I think okay. he did. But I tell you what, that was a big hit to Castagna's face. That would have yeah. hurt a lot. And I laughed. Like when I saw it, I, I, I thought Stonewall penalty. Like I, I really thought it was live. 
Mm. Um, then you watch it. I just started laughing when I saw the the oh. ray flies back at me. I'm there. expecting Roger to comment with with the 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 right answer. To be honest, he's always got very pertinent information that he, he does. Wants to share. Yeah. So, Roger, we're waiting for your uh, for your justification below. Well, uh, no, no. a lot of people a lot of people were upset with, that we didn't get the corner, but um, I I think it was because he already blew the whistle. But yeah, I okay. think that's what it was. Please God. let us know if anyone knows. And- yeah. I was thinking, oh, God, you know, we've been denied two goals. Momentum, like, oh, God, is it going to mm. shift at some point? Are we going to concede a shitty goal? And, you know, thank God we opened the deadlock. So, yeah, we'll <sighs> get to we'll get to that because after yeah, yeah. after halftime, um, no, Fulham really did play well. And I think they were the better team in the second half. And uh, we kind of went to sleep a little bit, got a bit sloppy with our passing and maybe um, our legs had gone a little bit with the midweek game. But... Full credit to Fulham. I think you guys, you know, turned up in that second half and and asked some real questions. Yeah, I was going to say that. Um, I think, obviously, I don't think Villa got our second gear all game, to be honest with you. Mm. But at the start of the second half, they took it to it. It was one substitution, Harry Wilson. Yes. Now, he is a baller. I know he didn't have it good for him at Liverpool when he was there as a youngster, but he's actually a f- unbelievable footballer and Fulham is getting the best out of him at the moment. He was opening up. Um, just all sorts of space for him and Esther running behind. And and he, he's a tricky football. I know when we were in the championship, he played for Derby in that playoff final. We were hoping yep. that we'd pick him up alongside a guy called Mason Mount, who mm. was just breaking into the scene as well. Um, so he, he's got potential, obviously. Tamori he, as well was part of that yeah, team. That, um, you think about the players I had. Yeah. Tammy Abraham was at Villa. Mm. It was a weird days, those. But yeah, Harry Wilson always had the potential. He's starting to... I guess, show what he can do. And I, I think if he keeps going, he won't be at Fulham for very long because I think that someone else will snap him up the top yeah. half side. But and he's oh, performing just, for Wales as well. He is. He yeah, is. It's, it's so. just incredible. Hmm. But I do have to, I, I do want to hear what Ollie Watkins fan club member number one, favorite nut fan. I knew this was coming. Tommy Lazaridis has to think about his goal. I know Muhammad Adam is looking oh, forward to Oh, I thought you were going to talk about the the one he missed. The ah, header. So <laughs> you, you, you've, you've jumped the gun. I said, Ollie, uh, Ollie, you know, you, you scored one, but you should have scored two. And you've He should have scored two. Definitely. But how, yeah. how, what's the number one fan thing of his uh, goal scoring streak at the moment? He's in incredible form. Uh, honestly, I've backed him in. If you go back to the earlier podcast, nothing yeah. Scott, no, please blur out what I said. He's a believer him. now. He's a believer. I'm a believer, honestly. I've got Ollie fever. <laughs> Um, um, but honestly, no. What we missed that? How do you miss that? Fu- so, Ollie, how do you miss that fucking sitter? Captain doing oh, fantasy mate. over Salah, over Harland, and you go and miss that sitter. You do me dirty. Oh, Tommy. The, the, only, the only excuse I can give him is I think the ball was spinning off the bar. Yeah. Like, so it, it took a bit of a leg hey, break when, when, it, hey, when it bounced, maybe, but I don't know. This guy makes our collective annual wages in a week, Scott. You can't miss that. It was also absolutely pissing down with rain. That's it was. What, but Mate. yeah, he's got to score that because that header was that was, was to see that wasn't game. even going out. That was going towards the, you know, the towards for a throw in. Like yeah. yeah, it was it was terrible. But the goal he did score, um, I want to highlight Leon Bailey because um, he comes on on the sixty second minute, and then it's only uh, two minutes later that Watkins scores and. Um, the, he picks up the ball, drives at the defense, gives it to McGinn, and then he makes this yes. lovely run around the outside of McGinn, um, gets the ball back, low cross, lovely little tap in from Watkins. But that just shows, again, Bailey's been sitting on the bench. He's been playing well. A ready lot of people go. have been saying he should be starting, but he is ready to go. Like you said, Noah, every time he comes on, he's making a difference. Oh, massively, and... Oh, he's just he's just special this season, and it's proving why I think he should be getting a contract extension because yeah. he's playing his role to perfection. And even when he starts for us, he's still doing such a good job. He's not complaining. Like I remember when people were saying Yuri Tillemans was cracking it because he wasn't starting for Villa. He's it. Some players take a little bit longer to settle in, and we saw that with Leon Bailey. I know he you know scored like on his debut and stuff and set the world alight. But when you look at players like I know Pau Torres settled in quickly, Kamara settled in quickly, but someone like Danny Ings never really settled with Aston Villa, for example. Mm. Like never really settled in. It it does mm. take players a long time. And Leon Bailey, I think, has now settled in at Aston Villa. I think he's know, knows his role. He knows the manager trusts him. He knows he's not a fringe player. Because that was one thing. I guess Gerard didn't like wingers mm. and didn't really like Leon Bailey. Like he sold all our wingers off 
and we had no yeah. wingers and it, it really hurt us. But now I think he knows he's got a manager that trusts him. I think it's helping his game. Yeah, absolutely. And, I, and I'm thinking, you know, I know we want him to start, but they're not saying that you become ungrateful. But if he starts a run of games and then Emery rotates the system, plays a different formation, drops him all of a sudden, does it become pissy and shitty? Where mm. And it's actually funny from all the rumours you heard, right? Bailey might be seeking a move away from Villa, lack of plank. I mean, he's actually coming at himself and, and saying, well, just squashing them all, saying, no, like, I've accepted my role. This, we also did stand by him, right? Like, we shelled our big money, top-notch, you know, recovery, whatever he had to go through. Um, and I also think because rapid play is probably a, a more exposed to hamstring injuries than others, I think th- a, a, a full half is probably plenty for him if he's willing to accept that. Mm. Came on, dominated, and just blitzed it. Um, Absolutely blitzed you know, it. And, so, he, and he is playing in the conference league as well. He's, that's what yeah, I mean. So he's yeah. always yeah. playing like a game and a half in every two. So, you yeah. know, theoretically, he's, I think he's getting plenty of game time, and that's probably the perfect way and to his, his goals and assists per per minute is up there with some of the top players in the league. And and yeah. and may we add it. And also just when yeah. Ollie scores, right? Like just Bailey's celebrating, losing his mind. Like that's what you love. That's someone mm. who's bought in. And I really think him and Tillemans are just a dangerous duo. Whether they start, whether they come off the bench, whether they play conference and some prem, mm. like it's great to have them. And I think Tillemans will be happy now. You know, even if we rotate the squad, I think he's happy that he knows he's in the system. Yeah. Um, and, and I don't think anyone's really guaranteed a starting spot. No one. Once Mings no. is back, once Carlos is back to full fitness next season will be interesting. Everyone's, you know, got, got to play their part. I think, I, I think, I do think, I think Zaniolo is going to sit on the bench for a little bit. Oh, yeah. Well, I, I, that, I was, funny enough, I was just thinking about this before bed of all things. I was wondering, I'm like, well, you know, say his loan deals up, do, you know, I, I, I wonder if we're going to trigger his $27 million purchase price. It's, and... it's, it's, if he plays enough games, I think he has an yeah. obligation if he, if okay. he trigger it. Well, I think so, um, is that why maybe he benched him or do you, like I'm sure clubs are mindful of this. How many minutes yeah. a player gets and all this stuff. I think, mate. I think you know I'd trust Emery to to make the call if he if he sees something in him, then I'm willing to back him. But um, we did concede again, Noah, and I just want to talk about this. We can't get that clean sheet. Um, the offside trap was broken by Anthony Robinson making a nice run from Good deep run, yeah. and players. Um, from the opposition team are starting to sort of maybe figure this out a little bit. We've been caught a few times in the last few matches uh, with this sort of, um, you know, third third man run from midfield or from fullback. And, um, you know, is it something to worry about? I mean, we still got them offside like maybe seven or eight times in this match. But, you know, is it something to worry about? I know Emmy Martinez was pissed off. I mean, if we didn't have a manager like you know Emery, it's something to worry about. I think he'll be watching that goal back. He probably watched it back a hundred times already, yeah. Um, to try to figure out how he got how Robinson got through so easily, and they'll adjust it. Mm. It's it. Emery's not going to back away from this system. We're catching teams offside so frequently, yeah. And he'll work as he'll work on this, and he'll adjust it. I'm more pissed off that Jimenez scored his goal. First of course, the, yeah. As soon as yeah. they put up that it was thirty-three games without a goal, I was yeah. like, "Well, he's, he's scoring today." He's scoring. <laughs> I'm not sure. If, I'm not sure, you guys, watch like the Villa on tour um, video. Um, yes, but uh, Max said like if he's going to score, he's going to score against Aston Villa, and lo and behold, he scores against Aston Villa. So I am happy for him in as though, despite it yeah. being Villa, I am really happy given what he's been through. It's not yeah, he's been through a hell of a lot. Crazy, oh, injury, shocking crazy injury, injury. Yeah. and he's never been the same ever ever no. since Noah. I no. actually wouldn't have minded him as a backup forward. I think they only got him for like five million. They got him well, for an absolute bargain. He was yeah. absolutely killing it before the injury. He um, was, you know, he was a very informed striker and scoring goals for Mexico, and you know, he was a great player. Um, you know, he still is a good player, but let's hopefully he can get back to where he was before. I am. Um, I do rate uh, uh, their, their left back, by the way. I think he, Robinson, I think he's actually really good. I think mm. he's a bit unfortunate. He's got pace. He's rapid. He's quite good defensively. I'd love to snap someone up like that. You know, yeah. have a fourth left back. Why not? We'll play a team <laughs> full of left. We'll have infinite left footers. Yeah, I think we need a right back before we... Uh, yeah. back, but but, but, but no, I, I do that. like him. But there was one thing I want to talk to you about, Tommy, and that was Unai Emery's comments before this game. He was asked in in a... In a um, interview that's doing the rounds, are Villa going for top four? And he said, no. He said, no, we're we're going for that sort of seventh, sixth spot. Um, Chelsea, Man United are still ahead of us in that in going for that top four race. Now, was this a ploy from Emery? Was he just trying to dampen expectations or take pressure off the players? Or do you think he genuinely believes that? Uh, I, I think he's keeping the pressure off, to be honest. Um, and and no, those are my own words, just by <laughs> you t- t- typing them in the chat. 
I think yep. he's keeping the pressure off. I think he's trying to keep us all humble. Um, you know, I think we're all excited. I think it, it pisses me off. You know, I've seen Villa, a lot of Villa fans say, oh, well, you know, it's not being too optimistic, but next week, if we win by this and then City and Liverpool draw, I said, well, if we won last week, we'd be sitting top of the table. If we look at it like right. that, if we beat the teams that we were supposed to, I think everyone backed us to beat Forest, right? Yeah. Um, you know, despite them being a difficult side. So, and there's no, gonna be yeah, bumps. There's gonna be bumps in the road, and I, everyone needs what? to. I'll, I'll make a little I'll, bit, but I'll, I'll reserve my sentiments for, till Jan. I don't want to get too carried away. Is it likely? I think so. Oh. I think we haven't got some easy fixtures coming, but I think yeah, we're, we're facing Tottenham at the perfect time. So it's to- really Tottenham, favorable. Tottenham, Bournemouth, City, Arsenal. Arsenal. Yeah. Next four games. So yeah. we're gonna learn a lot in the next uh, month or so. It's gonna be a huge, huge um you know, a month or so after the international break. The international break, I think, has come at a good time. I think, we can, you know, I think we... we'll actually beat Spurs, beat Bournemouth, lose to City, draw with Arsenal. I think we are actually the informed side in the comp. Home or away... I'd probably take this, that. Know, I'll yeah, I said, you know, we've got a good home record. And all this I just stuff. feel we have, record's we can, broken, we, yeah. We can really frustrate teams. And again, you know, I said, I'll reserve my judgment till Jan. It's more that it players returning from injury than anything else. And... Do we make any big name signings? I wonder if Emery will just unload mm. the watches, saying, "Look, we're going to go for it." It'd be great to I see. Think, uh, I, think, I think the wheels great are to see the mode. owners go. Oh man, here you go, buddy. Like we, he's earned it. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Do who so, do you who do you want? Who do you want? It'd be it'd be fantastic to see that. But Jude you know, it'd be also amazing to see us break the record of thirteen wins at home. That is the record from nineteen eighty three, I believe. So if we go to four, we've equaled the record. So if we could beat it against the champions, against the European champions uh, in City at home, that would be quite a way to, you so know, make it 14. Any any Bournemouth fans, a cheeky 50 Australian, I don't know what that is, the pounds. It's like 25. 18 pounds, if that. Not in that, it's less than that. <laughs> anyway, cheeky 50 Australian. We'll make a 50 pounds if any of you can slip a laxative in Dominic Solanke's protein shake, the week of Villa, so... Come on, make he's, it happen. A, he's doing pretty well. He's quite dangerous, and they did get yeah. a good win against Newcastle, well, um, which I was a good caught, result you, for us. What, did you see Trippier, by the way? We went to the fans, he's like, you know, like, what about injuries? And he's like, you know, do you forget where we were two years ago? Yeah, don't really ungrateful never, that never, never, never talk to the fans like that. That's, I, there's, you, you're not going to win that argument. Yeah, like, Michael like Richards did it once. Yeah. Michael Richards, yeah. you pet stole it out of my mouth. No, so, <laughs> but you, um, you see it in 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 Italy, like the AC Milan fans like last season, the whole the whole lot had to stand there and just cop. They beers. shamed them. That's how yeah. it should be. Yeah. That's how it should be. I said, you've got an easy life. Go and put a ball in the back of the net or defend or whatever. These guys but, got to work. But no for other job wage. in the world do you have to put up with that. I mean, nah, <laughs> I, I, I don't think that. I don't I think know, man, there's, some, there's, some, there's some evil people in the corporate world, Scott, believe it or not. <laughs> but, True. Uh, some people but enjoy the, uh, Some people enjoy being shouted at. Look, look, despite injuries or not, you did call it with Bournemouth. I said, they're going to be super attacking and you just never know what to expect with them. I think it's yeah. going to work sometimes. It's probably going to work just, you know, it's going to go the other way just as much. But um, I think I think Bournemouth are actually an exciting team to watch this Yeah, season. That, that's not a game that I'm thinking we're just going to rock up and get three I, points. I, I, I think it's going to yeah. be like a one-nil scrubber. And to be honest, I think it's another McGinn special. Yeah. I'll, I'll save my, uh, I'll save it for them. I'm actually probably more confident against Tottenham, the fact that they're going through a bit of a slump and they've got all the injuries and the suspensions. Mate, the passing, absolutely. Yeah, I think Basuma and, and is missing. Ange Ball is been found out, maybe. Uh, yeah. Not really. I mean, like, they were two men down to Chelsea's Noah. Yeah, that loss yeah. against Wolverhurst, though. That really, yeah. that was sting, too. That was a nice minute. But Wolves are a tough side. Wolves are a tough side at Molyneux. No, yeah, but Everyone I love that. I want, to be, I want us to beat him, though. So, so, yeah, yeah. Oh, definitely. Sorry, I want to make Sorry, it through. Three, three defeats in a row for Ange would be great. Yeah, We'd great. jump ahead of them. And uh, with, like you said earlier, Tommy, with uh, City and Liverpool playing each other next week, it's a uh, it's a good opportunity for us to jump up that league. And yep, yeah, they'll be coming to you um, next. Well, in about ten days' time. So, should we do predictions for that game now, boys? Speaking of predictions, didn't I predict us fifth when we done at start of the season? You saw predicted. I think you said seventh against. I said Noah seventh. Said, yeah, I think Noah said seventh. I don't remember. Look, it's early days. Here, it's, it's early, early days, days Tommy. Man. Hey, mate. Tap's still paying. Tap's still paying. Never too late, Scott. <laughs> oh, man. I had a 10 leg multi for like 800 bucks, and AC Milan let me down this week. Wow. They were 2 0 up. I got the you other were, nine. 
I got gamble, the other nine. Gamble responsibly. Yeah, gamble, gamble responsibly. responsibly. Only um, you can afford to lose. Scott bet the house. It was only it was only twenty bucks. Yeah, but yeah. it was uh, remortgage. Um, remortgage. Uh, when they were two 0 up, I was uh, very very excited, and then they absolutely shat the bed. So thanks, uh, AC Milan. But um, all right. Shame, shame <laughs> by the fans and Scott oh, this time. Shit. Yeah, I wanted yeah. to yell at them. Yeah, you cost right. me seven hundred bucks. Predictions. Okay, um, yes, um, I'm gonna. I'll go first this time. As oh, I'm, gonna go first. I'm gonna say three, two, Villa. Thomas, it's at White Hart Lane. That's at the Tottenham Football Club ground. Yes, four nil Villa. I'm oh going for God. it. Jesus I'm Christ. I'm going for it, mate. I think wow. we are the sub we are the surprise package. No one's backing us in Noah. We're flying back under the radar. So win two one. Mm. You're boring, mate. <laughs> Who's gonna score? So, Richarlison? Son? Uh I think that it's going to be Son. Son to score. And then I think it's going to be a Watkins brace. If we are to concede, I'm telling you, they're going to kick it on the fucking post. It's going to hit Emmy's face and go in. That's that's how we've been conceding lately. I reckon, Til- I reckon Tillemans might get one and Bailey will get one. No, and, no, uh, it's a it's a what special. I'm backing my boy for four big ones. Tommy, I got something for you, mate. If if it's a sign Watkins shirt, you can keep it. I if Watkins scores twenty goals this season, you have to buy a Watkins. Aston Villa shirt. I will buy a signed Watkins Aston Villa shirt. I'll pay big bucks, Noah. If he scores 20 goals this if, season. <laughs> and, but we've got to make top six. All right. But, but if he doesn't, you've got to buy him something. Oh, I'll buy Tommy dinner. I'll buy, <laughs> yeah. I'll buy him a steak. Deal. Right. I'll hold you to the steak. So anyway, top six. Well, Ollie scores 20 plus. And I mean, if he scores 20 plus, to be honest, like we're probably looking pretty good. And, it will, and it will replace the Benteco shorts, mate. Mate, those things are gone. I don't even know where they are. It will replace where they were. Yeah, and um, so, quick, um, quickly before we go, well done to the women. Their first win yes. of the season in the league. Yes. 2-0 against um, Bristol City. Um, but, um, I've seen a lot of comments circulating just around saying, get Dean Smith back to coach the women's. And I wonder if it's actually a viable option. Uh, look, I don't know what he's. I'd, 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 lo- I'd love to I have wouldn't, I wouldn't give up on uh, Carla Wood yet. I think they had a pretty rough run in terms of fixtures they played all the big guns early and um they've got a few winnable games now so they've, they they won do. in the cup they, they've won their first match in the league so hopefully they can go on a bit of a run and um yeah so that's a, that's it for coup de villa this week We've got the international break coming up let us know um how you guys found the game against fulham where do you think we'll finish how do you think we'll go against tottenham and you know any sort of questions for us um, you know, like Roger threw in some questions the other week, which were great, like silly questions, like who would you who would you want with you in a fight in a in a in a dark alleyway from the Villa squad, all that sort of stuff. So let us know, um, leave it in the comments, like and subscribe, tell a friend, Ooh. listen on Spotify, and we will be back with um, Tottenham away in a couple of weeks, looking for a place in the top four. So till then, up the Villa, and up we'll see villa. you next time. Up the villa.